So I did not get a proper chance to introduce myself to you all. So, and uh, you all may have um, gotten a little confused why today's webinar has a topic of ICT news for beginners because in our boarding group we are always telling we are restricting everyone from posting anything that is not board related. But the topic is like ICT news for beginners, so many people must have gotten confused. So I will be clearing all your confusions before we start the webinar. And uh, again, welcome to everyone on behalf of the whole organizing committee. And uh, most people of you, first of all, did not get a nice uh, chance to know why we created the group. So when I was little, I had a lot of interest in words. And I always wanted to get interactive with them. And uh, that led to many things. So I also want different people to know, you know, we are seeing birds every day around us, they are here and there, the crows are growing, everything, etc, etc. But we never get to know in details uh, for birds. We have read in school, the different types of birds and etc, but we never get so detailed with them. And the much you wander into the world of birds, you will get to know many different things about them. That is very interesting. So I wanted people from different parts of India and you know also abroad to come and you know join in such a community where we will get more knowledge, we will get more um, things to know about birds and for that reason only I created that group, Atul Jaspati group and as you all may have known this is the first webinar. So I told already that topic is ICD tools for business. Now, the topic is a little bit different. It is not related to bird in such that way, but you know, when we organized webinars before this, uh, there were two webinars. Many people of you may have been uh, specific and common with those. That was Biodiversity Series 1 and NDF Series 1. And uh, those were very successful webinars, you know, but what we, from, from our experience, we saw that people were facing different problems, you know, joining in such an online community and then uh, hearing webinars on online, that is a new thing for us because for the, uh, in this COVID time, it is such a new thing. And people were complaining about, you know, we can't hear you, we can't hear the sound and you're not audible. So there were different kind of things that were inter uh, you know, interrupting and disrupting all the enjoyment in the webinar. So we thought that before starting any other thing in this group, we will first conduct a session on ICT tools. So people will, you know, know about ICT tools and people will not face such problems in future while attending these webinars. So without further wasting the time, let us, uh, let me just give you a detailed program of the webinar, how it's going to go today. So as all have known, it will be starting at uh, 7, 10, the main speaker will be starting at 17, but before that, uh, I already told you everything about um, why this group was created, etc. And after me, Dr. Rajani Gautam, she will be, she is Associate Professor of Zulazi of Bhopal. She will be giving us the introduction of our resource person. And our resource person is Dr. Shangita Dash, Assistant Professor of Botany, Bahona College, Jorhat Assam. And she will be giving you a very brief introduction and a very brief presentation on ICT tools. And after that, we are going to conduct our session and we are going to continue that till 8.10. And after 8.10, if you all have any query or anything, you can write it in the chat box. We have our chat box. So. And from 8.10 to 8.20, a 20-minute discussion session will be conducted. And we'll be answering to all your questions, everything you have. And there we are going to have the vote of thanks and some other announcements. So you all can get in a detailed plan what we are going to do in future. So I think I have introduced everything. And let's not, uh, you know, it's already 7 6 and let's not uh, waste any more time. So, Dr. Rajini Gautam, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. Uh, so, uh, I uh, passed the mic. Yeah, good evening to all. Yeah, good evening, ma'am. So, I pass the mic to you. You can please introduce our today's business person. Okay, thank you, Atmaja. Uh, good evening to Dr. Devrata Das, Dr. Panthi Ghosh. Atmaja Avinupa, uh, organizers of today's webinar on ICT tools for beginners. I, Dr. Rajni Gautam, 
feeling privileged to get the opportunity to address this webinar. Information and communication technology is an extensional term for information technology that expresses the role of unified communications. The term ICT is also used to refer to the convergence of audiovisual and telephone networks with computer. ICT is an umbrella term that includes any communication device and uh, encompassing radio, television, cell phones, computer and network hardware, satellite systems and so on, as well as the various services and appliances with them such as video conferencing and distance learning. Now I would like to introduce you all about the today's speaker, Dr. Sangeeta Das. Assistant Professor of Botany, Bahoma College, Jorhat, Assam. Dr. Sangeeta did her PhD from Dibrugad University, Assam, and also worked as PhD Women Scientist at Assam Agricultural University, Jorhat, Assam. She had edited many books and published a number of research papers and articles in reputed journals and books. She has presented a number of papers in different national and international seminars all over the country and delivered lectures as a resource person both inside and outside the country. She is also a member of editorial board in the International General of Integrated Research and Development, IJIRD, General of Intellectuals, JOI, and a reviewer in many national and international journals. Now, without, uh, without wasting time, I would like to invite our eminent speaker, Dr. Ch Sangeeta Das, to enlighten us with her lecture on ICT tools for beginners. Over to you, Dr. Sangeeta. Hello? Namaskar and uh, a very good evening to one and all present in this uh, ICT uh, webinar, which is conducted by this uh, uh, Facebook group in association with this organization via Google Meet, that is through online method. So first of all, I would like to thank Dr. Rajini Gordon, Madam, thank you ma'am, for this uh, nice introduction. and. Uh, uh, I would uh, also like to thank uh, Dr. Deborah Das for uh, organizing this uh, webinar on ICT tools and giving me this opportunity to interact with all of you who are present here today. Thank you so much. So, uh, as uh, Dr. Rajini Gordon, Madam, he has already uh, mentioned about the topic of our today's webinar. So, this is uh, the topic is ICT tools for beginners. So before uh, starting this session, I would like to tell you that uh, I work in the Department of Botany at uh, Bahana College and this institute is located in the town of Jorhat uh, within Assam, which is a part of Northeast India of our country. So let us uh, come back to our topic that is about ICT tools for the beginners. So ICT uh, tool, it is not a new uh, tool. We, we were already using it before this pandemic situation, long back, we were using, uh, we already know certain, you know, uh, uh, modes or uh, methods or different tools that we are using uh, as a mean of our already offline system of uh, communication. And uh, uh, so today, uh, we will start with a few of the tools, basic tools I'd like to say, which are uh, really essential to join in any online kind of webinars. So let me first of all share my uh, PPT. So let me start with the sharing option that if you want to share something, because this in this particular Facebook group, everything is going to get organized via Google Meet. So uh, I will uh, basically focus on Google Meet. So in Google Meet, you can see that if you are joining uh, using a system, that is a laptop or a uh, you know, uh, you know uh, desktop, then you might have already uh, seen that for presenting there are three options. 
and many times it should happen that uh, your ppt is open but still you cannot present it i mean it is not uh, visible to your students or to your participants so it often happens and uh, that is why you should know that which option you should click like right now i'm going to share a ppt with all of you and uh, if i want to share a ppt i can go for there are two options the very first option is your entire screen you can present your entire screen if you are joining to a desktop or a laptop now uh, if if you are going to share your entire screen it so happens that uh, everything that is stored or that is present on your desktop or on your screen it will become visible for your students or to your participants and sometimes you might feel awkward because you do not want to share each and everything that is stored on your system so that is why you can go for the second option or the first option that is sharing a tab or sharing a window now right now i am going to click share a window and uh, before that i must ensure that my ppt it is open on the in the in my background otherwise what will happen your ppt will not be uh, you know it will not be visible to your students or to your participants so many times uh, it happens like right now you see my ppt is not visible so technical errors are always possible it is possible that many times even if your ppt is open it might not might may not be sharing so i am resharing and this time i am sure you are going to view my ppt uh, if uh, if you are viewing my ppt this type uh, one in the chat box or atmosa you can let me know whether it is visible or not yes well it is visible thank you atmosa so uh, the thing right now it is visible and i have clicked on the the middle option that is share a window so that way uh, we can always share it now let me go to the uh, full you know, presentation view so this is our today's topic rct tools for uh, beginners i'd like to request all of you that if you join with your system and in between if you cannot uh, see my ppt or if i am not audible then you please let me know because uh, in google meet this is a problem that when you are sharing something your presentation then it cannot see your audience so that is the problem so it might happen so please just let me know if it is not visible or if i am not audible so this is our uh, uh, topic and uh, this is my mail id and my phone number for your future reference if you feel uh, kind of interaction no kind of interaction then you can always uh, contact with me using my mail id or a whatsapp number also i'll be available so ict is a not, uh, not a new technique that i have already mentioned we all are using different forms of ict different methods different tools of ict like we are using email we are using whatsapp uh, and nowadays we are also using you know, a uh, telegram through which we can send a text messages we can send a voice messages to our students or to our uh, participants or if you are a business person to your uh, you know but the person and so on so different methods we are already using but since the uh, starting or beginning of this pandemic session uh, from the last year that is 2020 march onwards we all are facing a very hard time we all are uh, you know facing this uh, difficult period where we all are isolated socially as well as physically we all are isolated we all are stuck in our homes we cannot meet anyone of course there is a positive side is also there because right now you are uh, sitting in west bengal you are sitting in rajasthan or maybe different parts of india and i am sitting in a remote part of india that is in jorhat and still i am able to communicate with all of you that is a uh, you know positive part but negative parts are more because you see right now i cannot see anyone i don't know who who are you sitting in front of me i just uh, on your screen is appearing your name is there visible but i cannot see anyone so it is a very difficult time that without seeing without being you have to justify yourself you have to make your lecture up to that level so that your students or your participants they you know they get access to you they feel like listening to you otherwise night as you all know that on your mobile on a single click you can simply leave uh, this present uh, tag and you can go for clicking or uh, in your you know 
opening some other teaching or browser. So your students, if they, they will not be feeling interested, they will not be interested. In that is the issue uh, uh, nowadays. So that is how we should know certain basic ICT tools. If, and I am quite sure that not all of you are beginners. You all have started your journey. Someone might be at the beginning, someone might be at the middle, someone might be at some advanced level of learning. But still, since the topic is for beginners, so I will do uh, as much as justice I can do with my topic and uh, let me go on. So ICD uh, means a lot which cannot cover in a single hour of talk. So uh, I'll, be, I'll be covering a very specific uh, part. So already we're using different ICT tools for retrieving, for storing, for creating. You know, now we are creating e-contents for our students and all. And uh, we are also writing our blogs, we are chatting, uh, we are emailing, we are also screencasting, we are organizing uh, webinars and, and so on. So if all of this I cannot cover. So specifically, I will stick to some terms. So some terminologies are on your screen right now. Uh, like uh, we will uh, learn about wave conferencing. What is wave conferencing? Then we will also learn about whiteboard. Uh, I, I guess uh, if someone is from the mathematical background or statistical background, you must be knowing how difficult it is. Many of teachers, uh, they are, uh, you know, they are just putting their camera or a mobile or laptop at some corner and they are using a whiteboard where they are writing and their students are uh, listening. So that is also a way of using whiteboard. But online also, uh, the same whiteboard is available and with a minimum costing, you can, uh, or at free of cost also, you can utilize this whiteboard. I will show you how to use it. Then attendance, this is another problem for our, uh, we the teachers, we all know. Uh, like in this webinar also, you see two plus people are present here. And if the organizer you know, wants to uh, find the attendance, then what he will have to do, he will have to uh, create a form for taking the attendance. Now, but if it's an online class and say your number of students is 100 or more than 100, which is possible if you're using a educational uh, uh, no, uh, this, uh, Google Meet account, uh, but in a personal account only 100 is allowed uh, right now. So then taking the attendance, it is going to be a big deal. Uh, it is very, very, very difficult to take the attendance if your students are 100 or more than 100. So in that case, I will show you how within a single click, within a single click, how you can take the attendance. Then quizzes, uh, we all know how, what we are facing right now. If you, maybe you will have to conduct an online case, a quiz, or if you want to uh, you know, conduct we cannot physically meet each other like we are used to do in a conference hall or in a seminar hall or in a classroom or maybe in a business meeting. So I will show you the easiest way to create a form through which you can conduct your quizzes among your students or among your, or if you are a business person, you can uh, you know, a market survey and all you can conduct. And if time permits, I don't know, within one hour whether I will be able to complete all this, but I will try uh, to share with all of you some screen recording tool through which you can create some e-content uh, which you can share with your students, your uh, you know, your, uh, uh, your customers or your some other business person. So basically these are the terms that I'm going to share with all of you. And to begin with, this, there's a single word that explains all of the, most of these and it is Google, yes? So Google has done a lot over the years to make our online teaching learning process a better one. This is because of Google, they have developed so many apps, so many handy and useful, very simple, simple apps. Uh, at free of cost, you can use them, uh, simply use this, uh, you, you will have to know how to use it. And you can use all these different types of apps. And I'm quite sure many of you are already using up most of these apps. Take Gmail. We all have a Gmail account. Of course, earlier people used to have some, uh, account in the mail or some other, uh, you know. But uh, nowadays, we all are having a Google Gmail account. And this is what is the basic thing that you need to utilize all of these apps. 
Then Google Calendar, you might have heard if you are using Google Meet, so you already know what uh, what is the importance of Google Calendar. So using uh, you know Google Calendar, we can create the link. I will show you how to create the link. If you are just a beginner, you have just started your journey of ICT, I will show you. So Google Calendar is a very handy tool, you know, like uh, your mobile calendar or your the calendar that is on your uh, wall. Same way the Google Calendar works. You can store anything, any data, any reminder. You can put here, and it will simply send you messages or mails. Uh, you know, rem uh, reminding you about that particular event. So it is very, very useful tool. Then Google Meet. I will uh, explain already. We are using it. We are in this webinar using Google Meet. Google Docs is there. Uh, it is uh, more or less similar with that of your Word processor. We all know how our Microsoft Word works, so it is a replacement. Then Sheets is there, it is a replacement of Excel, you can say. And Slides, uh, presentation slides, we are already using. Then Google Form, I will show you how using a simple Google Form, you can create your quizzes or your online assessment. And it is very, very handy, I'm telling you. Then Google Classroom also, if you are a teacher, uh, I can see most of your students as well as teachers, so definitely you are using Google Classroom, like I'm also using Google Classroom. This is a virtual classroom where you can teach your students, you can uh, assign them with some assignments, with online exams, uh, then you can also upload materials, videos, and so on. So it is such a useful tool. And there are many more. So Google Drive, uh, I know if you are having a Gmail account, you are already having a Google Drive. So this is a one-stop solution, Google. Only we need is a Gmail account. Then wave conferencing. What is wave conferencing? Right now, the way we are communicating, this is a direct, although indirect, but still it is direct because you can simply unmute, you can put on your video and you can interact. So the most uh, useful tool uh, nowadays we can find is Zoom and is Google Meet also. So uh, Google Meet we are already using and there are many more. Like Zoom is there, Zoom meeting, both meeting is there. Yes, uh, um, yes. Uh, actually, I'm sorry for interrupting, but uh, I think uh, you are moving your slides, but we are not seeing any slides moving. Okay, okay, okay. You should have told me earlier. Okay. Actually, it happens yeah. sometimes, yeah. yeah. When we go for full screen yeah. mode, then it. Yeah, yeah now, now I think visible. it is visible. Yes, now. Okay. Okay. So I have to uh, carry on like this. It's okay. Oh, no. Sorry for interrupting. It's okay. So uh, after the first slide, this is what I was telling, that uh, there are different types of uh, ICT tools. Then uh, these are the terminologies I was just now I was discussing with all of you, uh, like wave conferencing, whiteboard, how to take attendance, then how to uh, create and conduct quizzes, and screen recording tools. Okay. So the next slide. Uh, this was, I, I just now I have finished this one, that I was talking about Google and these different types of, uh, you know, like Gmail account, then Google Calendar, Docs, Sheets, Slides, Forms, the Classroom, okay, this is the Classroom, uh, I'll show you, and then Drive, and so after this, uh, I think it is okay, I can move on. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So now uh, I was discussing about uh, wave conferencing. So these are the different options for web conferencing. The only basic requirement is that we should, we all must have a uh, common, uh, you know, app uh, or common uh, this software. Like in this case, uh, we are meeting using Google Meet. Okay. Then there are other different. All of you might have gone through Zoom meeting. Then go to meeting is there. Cisco is there. Free conference call. Microsoft Teams. Google Hangout is there. And there are many more for web conferencing. But I will basically stick to Google Meet because uh, here uh, all of most of this ontology uh, abundance it will be conducted using Google Meet. So this is the interface. It is not in full screen view. So sorry.
So this is what we were explaining. Uh, I guess it is visible. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So this is a Google uh, Meet interface. And uh, in Google Meet, uh, while joining in many webinars, I have seen that the organizer constantly keep on, keep on telling the participants that please do not present, please do not present, uh, do not click on the present now option. But instead of uh, telling them that, uh, I would like to tell you that in this new version of uh, this educational uh, Google Workspace, uh, Google Meet uh, your, uh, app, there is an uh, icon. You can see this. This is a triangular icon. So if you will click, uh, or in your case, it might be like this three dots maybe present. So if this is the uh, icon. If you click on this icon, you will see that a new pop-up menu will appear. And there are two options, share your screen and send search messages. So you can see here, like uh, this, this was uh, one of my, uh, you know, uh, classroom where I have taken the screenshot. So I have, what I have done, I have simply disabled the option share their screen. So that way what I can do, I can profit my meeting. And my, my students will never be able to share their screen because I have not allowed them to. Then send chat messages, that also I can disable or I can enable according to my wish. So these two options, these are such a simple and handy buttons which are available with this new Google Meet app. You can simply uh, disable this button and no one will be able to share their, uh, share their screen. So that way your webinar will run smoothly. Then another option uh, feature of Google Meet is that if you are using a G Shoot, earlier it was known as G Shoot, but now it is known as Google Workspace. So here if you are having an educational account, email, uh, account, then you can have this record meeting option. You can go for recording your meeting, online meeting. Then there is there are many other options like change your background. Probably many of you might be knowing that you can change your background if you do not want to show what is present behind you, or say you are uh, you are moving you are somewhere outside and you cannot uh, on your video. So in that case, you can go for change your background and on the background whatever is present it will not be visible. Then on this top corner, you see, this is the whiteboard. I was talking about this. So this is Google whiteboard. So this is, uh, uh, you know, it is replacing our traditional whiteboard. Like uh, during our offline mode of classes, we, we all might have used this uh, whiteboard or blackboard is already there. So now it is, uh, we are replacing those uh, blackboards with whiteboard. Now Google has also provided a Google Meet app, uh, they have it with this whiteboard. So simply you can click on it, a whiteboard will appear, you'll have to share your entire screen and the students will, able, will be able to see your whiteboard and if you have a graphic tablet, you can, uh, you can purchase it, it comes from 3,000 to, uh, if you go on beyond 50,000 also, but with a minimum I'm telling you, if you want to, uh, uh, you, know, you can spend the three to 5,000, you can buy a graphic tablet and uh, with a graphic tab tablet on this whiteboard, you can simply write any mathematical formula, any statistical formula, which is uh, otherwise is troublesome in putting in a presentation. So it's such a handy option. I will show you how to use. Another alternative is this Jamboard. You can simply type on Google Jamboard. So this is the logo of uh, Google Jamboard, and this is the interface, how it appears. So I have uh, added here one picture. This is what I, I created for my first year students to simply add, uh, you know, you can uh, put on uh, some uh, notes also. Uh, like here, uh, you can see here, I created this assignment for them of five marks. Uh, they were just uh, uh, doing their RD uh, classes, starting of the classes, courses. So this is how you can make your presentation a better one, interactive one, and interesting one. Your students will feel like listening or being your presentation. Otherwise, they might feel bored if you just keep on talking or in a word if you are just typing and you are just telling your students or your participants. Then. then another one I want to share with you is about how to take the attendance. So for that, a one-stop solution is meet attendance. So this meet attendance, probably many of you are using like I am using and if not, you can start using it. Very, very handy, very easy to 
use, and I will show you how to use Meet Attendance. Now, this is the logo of Google Meet Attendance, and you can see that if you are using this attendance, you can, you know, you can track your students or your participants. Like say, right now in this webinar, 60 plus or 50 plus people are present, and if you want to know about take, take, uh, uh, their attendance, then it will show you, like this is test user 1, test user 2, that this is these are their mail IDs. All of you might have uh, logged in using your mail ID or start mail ID. See, this is the duration. Okay, you can monitor by duration. This is the duration. Let's say for this test user 1, he, attend, he has attended your class, your lecture, or say this webinar for 20 minutes only, and then he left. Say what time he joined. Okay, so 8.30, let's say 8.30 you started your meeting, and he joined at 8.30. When he left, he left at 8.50. So his first name, his last name, everything on a single page you can monitor. This is such a handy tool, which Google has developed. So I'll show you how to use this meet attendance also. And uh, the next one that I wanted to share with you is quizzes. So all of our uh, now using you know quizzes like question papers we are setting every day. But if you are using this Google form, and another alternative uh, one is Microsoft form. So uh, this is uh, in Google form there is a setting. You can see here this is suppose this is for example I have added here a picture of weekly math quiz. Okay, this is a math quiz. This is the question number one, and these are the options. The student has to click on the right option, and you have a facility using Google Form that you can make it a quiz. So for that, there is a button I will show you. This is how to make it a quiz. Okay, you simply have to enable this button to make it a quiz. Otherwise, it will be a simple form for collecting information from your students or from your customers or your you know, users. Then there are other options available, like release, they are great. Suppose you are conducting a weekly match uh, test, online test of say 20 marks. So you can release the uh, mark, like there, suppose out of 20, uh, student 1, he has scored 15, someone has scored 18, someone has scored say, 10 marks. So if you click on this button, then immediately uh, they will get their grading after submission. Okay, And uh, uh, you can also make it manual. Suppose you are, you are giving them something uh, which is uh, not a multiple source MCQ question. Say this is a short answer, or this is a short note type of question you are given. You are given. So in that case, you can click on this the letter after manual review. You can manually check it. You can put marks out of school if he has got 1.5 or 1 mark. And later on, you can reduce your grade. So this is such a handy tool. Okay. Then uh, there is other also other options like they can see missed questions, they can see the correct answers. If you want to show them that how many questions they have missed or they have made it wrong or how many correct answers, then accordingly you can simply click on those buttons. So I will show you how to create a Google form also. And the last part that I'm going to share with you is about screen recording. I normally used to see that during webinars, people used to ask for the video. Uh, they used to ask for the video lectures even, that uh, what about the recorded star map is there with uh, us, the video recording. But what I'd like to suggest to you that if you have a email account, a personal uh, Google Meet, uh, you're using a personal Google Meet uh, account, then you can simply go for some handy and uh, free tools like free camp. I will show you. This free cam it is a freely available on uh, uh, you know, using internet. You can simply download it and you can record the lectures. Whatever your teacher is telling you, whatever in the webinar, the resource was speaking, you can simply record using free cam. I will show you how. Then another similar to free cam is screen cast These are known as screen casting or screen recording tools. So screen cast it is a little bit uh, different from that of we can because in here screen customatic you can also record your video. This is not possible in case of screen cam. So this is the logo of free cam. This is how it appears. And uh, this is the interface. Once you will uh, download the software, it will, uh, it will, you, know, uh, you will see uh, it like this. The dotted uh, rectangle will come, you can readjust the size and you can record the screen. So whatever is appearing on that particular screen, 
and uh, another one is screen customer. Okay, so this is also a uh, freely available tool, but uh, uh, it is a little bit <coughs> advanced compared to your uh, free cam. Uh, in that, uh, you here you can also record your video. The webcam option you can available if it is there in your uh, system, and then. Uh, you can only record the screen, you can only record your video, or you can record a vote. Okay. So this is what today I'm going to share with you. And uh, let me start with uh, Google Meet. So for that, let me stop sharing. So now we will go for some practical session and like how to create it. So or uh, the uh, this is a Google Meet, you know. So let me share a tab, or let me share my entire screen. So right now I am sharing my entire screen so that it becomes visible to all of you. So this is how you can share your entire screen. So this is the option that I, I was telling you. So right now here. Uh, the record option is not here because I think it is a personal uh, Google Meet or Gmail account uh, the organizer is using. But had it been a, a Google Workspace or G Shoot account, educational account, then there would have been a, a recording option. So this is the whiteboard as you can see here. This is the change your background. Simply you click on it. Okay. So here options will appear. I think it is visible. You can see it. So these are different. Uh, you know, but right now my camera is off, so I do not show you. But you can explore it by yourself. Click on any of these wallpapers. You can also add wallpapers. See, use image from this. Whatever is stored on your system, you can use it for uh, changing your wallpaper. And then uh, this is the whiteboard. Yeah, so I have clicked on this uh, Google whiteboard. So this option, this pop-up menu is coming. Okay, this is the whiteboard. So I can simply start a new whiteboard. Uh, it will take some time okay. and then it will appear. And alternately, it could, it could also choose from your graphic. So it is uh, asking me, so I am going for uh, turn link sharing on. Anyone can uh, share, uh, see this whiteboard if I, uh, okay, I'm not doing this, uh, let's not do this. So this is the option, okay, start a new whiteboard. You can click on this, to, uh, because right now I am presenting it, no? so that is why it is showing me some uh, issues. But otherwise, in a simple classroom or webinar, you can go for clicking this whiteboard, and you can write anything, just you need a graphic tablet. This is one. And another one I was telling you about this one, okay, activity step. So here, uh, right now it is not coming because I'm just a participant, so I cannot uh, control uh, whoever is sharing. And I cannot stop you from sharing your screen because I'm just a participant here. I have not that. So now let me uh, close it. Let me show you how to create a Google Meet link. For that, I need to share a deep tab. Uh, so this is a new tab that I have created and I'm sharing this tab. I think it is visible. Yes, it is visible. It's coming. So this is the tab, okay? So for that, what you have to do, what you have to do is, you can simply go to this list. Can you see this? This is, uh, these nine buttons are there. This square nine buttons are there. And uh, once you put your parcel here, it shows Google Apps. So you simply click on it. So it will show you a number of apps that Google has developed over these years. See, this is Google Classroom. I'm using it, so it is coming on top. If you're not using Google Classroom, it will be uh, at the bottom of the list. Okay. Then uh, this is Gmail, this is Drive, this is Google Calendar. You can see here, this is the Google Calendar. So simply you click on this Google Calendar. So once you click, your calendar will appear. It is appearing. So this is your Google calendar. Today is 25th of July. 
2021. So this swing you see, and then Monday this whole weekend, then your time from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. swing you, right? So these are my classrooms, the Google classrooms that I am already using. First time, second time, and so many others are already stored here because I'm continuously using it. So what you have to do, say you want to conduct a webinar on 1st of July, okay? Today is 25th of um, July, and 1st of, sorry, August, I want to create that Google Meet link. Say I have a class at 10 p.m. Okay. So then you can see this. This is at 10 p.m. Okay, just simply click on it. See, it is coming. Add a title. Say I am putting, say I have a class of BSC first class. Right? So this is my title, the BSC first class class. Right? Then I can change the time if I wish. Say uh, my class is not from 10 p.m. Uh, uh, p.m. Uh, Sorry, it is p.m. Right now, I'm just showing uh, you p.m. So, I'll have to change it to a.m. So, this is 10 a.m. So, from 10 to 11 a.m. For one hour, I am taking a class. Then, what you have to do is you simply click on this link. Add Google Meet video conferencing. You simply click on it. Now, it is creating a Google Meet ID. Can you see this? This is the ID. You can copy it. Like, this is a copy button. Copy this info, you can copy it, you can paste it somewhere for your future reference, or if you have a WhatsApp group or Telegram group with your students, you can simply share the link with your students. And then simply you save. Okay, so it will get saved. So it will uh, even send you a message automatically if you click on uh, this. So it is showing me that uh, I have four days to start this particular class. So that way you can create. Uh, Google Meet, uh, you know, link. Then on that particular date or time, you can join with Google Meet, and your students will be, uh, you know, they, they can join you in this particular webinar or your class, whatever you are creating. And it will get stored in your Google Calendar so that for your future reference, if you want to see how many number of classes you have taken or what was the uh, last day you attended uh, some meeting or class, you can go back. It will always be stored on your Google Calendar. So it is a very handy option to share or store many personal data which you do not want to store somewhere offline. Like if you uh, share, uh, if you will write in a diary, the diary might be missing or someone might, there is a chance no, that someone might see it. But in a Google calendar without your password, without, if you do not log in, if they do not know your password, they cannot uh, see your data. So that way you can store many information using Google calendar. So I hope this is clear. Now, <clears throat> the next uh, I uh, want to show you about uh, meet attendance, okay, how to use meet attendance. So for that, you need to go to Google once again, okay, and here we will type from web. So the basic requirements to use uh, this Chrome Web Store is that, or this attendance app is that, you must have, uh, you, you must have a browser, Google Chrome. If you're not using this Google Chrome browser, because many of you might be using you know, Internet Explorer, Microsoft, ETC is there, and uh, Opera is there, Mozilla is there, so there are so many other browsers. So the basic requirement to use this uh, meet attendance is Google Chrome. If you're using Google Chrome, you can simply use and type Chrome Web Store. Now, you can see here, this is Google Chrome Web Store. Okay? We will uh, go to this extension. You can see here, there are so many apps are there, teams are there, etc. So, we will, uh, just, uh, if you can take a screen, screenshot, we will click on this extension button. Now, a new window is uh, appearing. You can see. This is a new window. This is the Chrome Web Store, as you can see. Okay, now there is a source button here. It's the source tab. So here we will simply write meet. So it is appearing. See, this is meet and enter. So you see immediately uh, when I have clicked on this meet attendance button, so many apps are coming. Like the first one is Google Meet attendance list. And the next one, this is what I want to show you. This is a meet attendance. So you can use this first one also. If you click on it, it will automatically, it will like your uh, attendance of your any online meeting that you create using Google Meet. 
it will automatically keep on taking it. But I do not want to make it auto. I want to make it manual because uh, sometimes it so happens no, that I do not need the attendance of many meetings that I am conducting. So if I uh, require, I will take the attendance. If I do not require, I will not. So I will go for meet attendance. So you click on this meet attendance, you see, since it is already added to my browser, from browser, so it is going to be removed from from. But uh, uh, in your case, if you are using it for the first time, you can uh, practice it right now, then it will show you that uh, add this extension. You click on it, you will have to uh, verify which your mail ID you will give it access ex uh, of your mail ID and then it will get simply added to your browser. So on this uh, browser, okay, so I will show you how I am using it. So this is the uh, uh, show everyone that is say 80 people right now, uh, all of you are present here. So I guess it is visible. So here you see, uh, this is me and my presentation and below these are so many people who are present right now. So see, this there, there is a small you know, button is here in the middle. Can you see my cursor? <coughs> this hand, it is showing a small uh, button. See. So if I will click on this button, then another uh, tab is opening. This is the one. Can you see this? So see, just a single click, I have taken the attendance for all of you. Now I can see who has joined at what particular time or if you have, if none of you have, uh, any, some, some of you have, uh, might have, uh, you know, uh, uh, joined at this particular time. You have not yet left or whoever is left, uh, I can see the duration. Okay? So that way, you <coughs> see, the duration of this meeting is uh, 51 minutes. Right now it is running. So uh, these are the people who are present in this particular uh, meeting. Okay. So 92, it is going here. So that means 90 of you are present here. So this way, and you know, it, you can also share it. Uh, you know? Right now it is private only me, but if I wish to share it with someone, uh, say uh, to your HOD, suppose the HOD is asking how many students have joined, and if your number of students is 100 or more than 100, you can simply add her uh, mail ID and you can uh, share it okay, with your uh, head or with any other whoever is asking you about the attendance of your participants or your students. So this is such a handy tool. So I guess uh, if you are able to follow me, whatever I am uh, showing you right now, and another uh, benefit is that this uh, particular list, uh, this is a, uh, this is, uh, you know, it will be available with your Google Drive. If, if you will be opening your drive, you will see that this sheet, meet attendance sheet uh, on the date 25-7-2021, it has been uh, added to your drive automatically. So this is such a handy tool. Okay. So the next one that I want to share with all of you is about uh, quiz. I guess I have very few uh, times left. So uh, uh, I'll show you how to create a Google form and quiz and then uh, maybe I will stop. So uh, for creating a quiz, the very uh, handy option is Google form. Open the form and then I will show you. So, <clears throat> for that, you can either type your Google form or another option is you can simply click on this list view button and you can see here also there is a uh, logo called form. You can explore it by yourself, teach, slides, and this is Google form. Okay? This, is two, uh, this, this is a logo or icon for this Google form. So, you simply click on this and uh, uh, it will... Uh, will lead you to this form. So you see, online, so many new uh, forms are available. This is the class button, it shows a blank. If you wish to create it on your own, you can go for blank. Or if you want to, you can also use some template which are already available. Like this for event registration, this is a specific uh, a sample form. This is for assessment, online assessment, if you want to make a quiz or something. Uh, this is for uh, uh, 
they are getting information regarding their content details and so many other template galleries there you can explore it by yourself so i would like to show you any one of uh, these yeah, for example uh, this is a form which i created for my students for uh, taking a class <coughs> let me open it so this is a bsc first term last year i took my class test <coughs> so this is a you can also add your pictures and you can see how many of them has uh, responded or answered your questions so here is another button responses you can see that 10 of my students they were 12 out of 12 10 has already uh, responded and the rest two of them they did not respond you can see uh, the average uh, number was 20 marks that i put so let me first of all show you about this uh, form so this is how i created I'll show you how I create their name and these are the questions. You see, I uh, prepared a quiz, uh, you know, uh, that means in a quiz you can shuffle your questions so that uh, the question number one may not necessarily be the first question. Like here I have put the term uses was going by. So if I put here question number one, then what will happen? The student will automatically come to know that where the question number one is and he can simply send a WhatsApp message to other students. So I'm not adding any uh, number here. So simply I have put the question, then I am using this form as a uh, quiz. I am restructuring the questions so that they cannot uh, you know, guess or they cannot. And also I'm giving them a very specific time to attend 30 minutes. Okay. So how I have done this, I would like to show you. There are some buttons here. The first one is add them. Second one is theme. You can change this theme. Like here, I have added one header photo. Then this color I have changed. Uh, so I'll show you how to do this. So this is the theme, okay? Here you can upload the image. Like here, I have uh, since this um, of, uh, quiz was on chromosome. So I have added a picture of chromosome here. Uh, you can change it if you wish. And then uh, this is the color theme. You can change uh, the color of your Google form if you wish. And so on, there are so many other options like background color, but in your phone style, and uh, so many things are here. So <clears throat> you can change your theme and uh, as uh, you want. Then there is a preview button, like after the creation of this form, if you want to see how it looks like, it will look like to your students. So right now, no preview is available because I have uh, closed this, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, collect this, uh, there is an option not accepting. So had I uh, enabled this button, then I would have been able to see this form. Then uh, there is another option that is uh, your which setting. Uh, this I want to share with all of you. This is very important. So this is about general settings. If you do not click on it, it will not be collecting their email. If they do not wish to add, uh, they, if they wish, they will add. They, they have to sign in definitely, but it will not collect their email. Then there is another option, limit to one response. If you do not click on it, then what will happen if uh, some of your participants or students, they think uh, that maybe I have done something wrong, I want to resubmit, they can, uh, you know, they, or for more than one, like two, three times, they can submit this same form. So to avoid that, you can click on this button. Then uh, this is the presentation, like uh, show the progress bar. Shuffle this question order, you can shuffle, and confirmation message. You can type anything here that after the submission of the form, whatever message you want to appear, you want to appear on your screen, it will appear. Then this last option is this quiz. So if you enable it, it will make it a quiz. If you do not enable, then it will not make it up. Then you can also release that grade immediately, like here I have clicked on immediately after each submission. So for that, what you have to do, and then you can save it. And uh, uh, after saving, what you can do, you can click on this send the button. So it will show you that send via email. You can send, if you know their email, you can simply click on here, and then you can send an email. Or alternatively, what you can do, you can click on this. So it will create a link. This is called the uh, you know, quiz link or Google Form link. You can sort in the URL. Simply, you can copy it, and you can paste it in your WhatsApp group or in your Google Classroom or anywhere you want to share this with. And uh, uh, later on, responses will be collected here. And this class symbol, if you click on it, so it will ask you to 
create a new spreadsheet or set up existing okay so uh, that way you can create a spreadsheet where all your information whatever your respondents have uh, you know uh, responded everything will get recorded in your excel sheet so it is that much of easy i'm telling you if you are still a beginner want to create uh, or want to take an online test if you want to create a quiz you can simply go through google uh, uh, form and another alternative is your uh, microsoft form it is more or less similar in the next one but the uh, time is very limited i think uh, my time was up late so i have to stop after 3 4 5 minutes so that's why uh, i guess you are able to follow uh, till now whatever i am telling you So if you have uh, any uh, doubt or query or regarding whatever I'm telling you, you can uh, uh, you, know, you can contact me after this. And uh, uh, so uh, it is not like that. I said I'm an expert on ICT. It's not like that. But since the last year, since we are using uh, all these uh, different you know uh, ICT tools, so a few of which I have already mastered. And uh, I'm, I'm still an advanced learner. I'd like to say. Although I have shared uh, some basic tools, these are very, very basic and handy tools. You can make your webinar very safe, uh, you know, without any disturbance, without uh, you know uh, uh, disturbing your participants. You can silently click the, you know, take their attendance. You can prevent them by uh, from uh, sharing your screen, and that way your online class or your online uh, meeting, whatever it is, maybe through Google Meet, through Zoom, you'll be able to. Protect your meeting from any unwanted kind of thing. So, with these few words, I'd like to conclude my talk here. Uh, I guess uh, whatever I have done through my experience, I have shared with all of you properly, and you, have, you are able to uh, you know follow me and uh, practice it at home. And uh, if you are a beginner, of course, if not, what are you might be doing these things? And please share with. Uh, Your, you know, with your friends, with your students, uh, so that they can also become a ICT enabled person. So uh, I would like to share a link in the chat box. Uh, this is uh, my Padlet, uh, my own uh, very own Padlet. You know, uh, when we uh, were uh, in a in high school uh, or in high secondary, what we used to do is that at the end of our class or something, we used to write. Uh, our names and our details, etc. So uh, we used to write it on a handkerchief or on, you know, uh, on our T-shirt. The boys they normally used to write their name, their signature, their uh, details on a uh, you know, uh, T-shirt. So he, that has been replaced by, you know, this uh, padlet. So this is the link I have just now shared on uh, your, the chat box. Please click on this link if you are not using padlet. You install it on your device. And uh, just send me a message. Whatever, you do, whether you are liking or not liking, you want to do something further, I will respond. Put your name, your email, and your institution if you wish to, and uh, just send me a message, like a feedback kind of a thing. I'm preserving it with me for my future reference. So I'm reposting it. Okay. So this is my feedback. Please respond. So that's all for today. Uh, if you have any questions, you can uh, interact. I'm looking at it. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. This was such an interesting uh, session because nowadays we are all online oriented, and uh, I hope this will help many of you. And uh, I myself learned so many new things today that I did not know in Google Meet till now, even after using it for so many days. And I'm pretty sure everyone has enjoyed the session and learned many things from it. And uh, I think. The petit that man put in the chat box will also help you all, and you all can just put your questions, whatever you have, in the chat box as Nam told earlier. And uh, by now we have two questions, so um, should I continue or should you take some time if you are going to answer the question? Uh, just a second, uh, I'm interrupting in between. You know, uh, somehow my camera has failed. I don't know why. I'll have to check on it. Uh, just give me a, a minute. I will bring my mobile, and I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'd like to put put on my video. I mean, yeah. Just give me a minute. I'll be back. So uh, till ma'am is uh, correcting everything, you all can put your questions there, and we'll be continuing to that.
I again repeat that if anyone of you have any question, you are free to put that in the chat box. Ma'am, you are visible, so I think uh, we should continue with you with the permission. Hey, Shadam. Whoever has their um, audios open, please uh, mute yourself. So I think uh, we should continue with the questions. I'll be happy to interact with all of you. Uh, somehow my uh, laptop video is not working. So that's why I have joined it through my mobile. So, uh, if not, uh, yeah. Yes, the first question uh, somebody was asking that uh, we are learning all this in Google Meet and Cisco, but is it possible um, uh, for Google Meet? So, is it possible for Zoom and Cisco so that we can keep the attendance? for the students or the people who are joining? Uh, in uh, Zoom, uh, I, I have never used it actually. I, I mean, from the very beginning, uh, we are using Google Meet because uh, our institutional, uh, we have a, uh, I have an institutional account and uh, that's how uh, this, but uh, you can try for it also for uh, this Zoom. I don't know, I have never used it actually. I have never tried. Uh, I have never charged for, but in Google Meet, this Meet attendance it is a very handy tool to take your students' attendance, provided they have uh, joined uh, through their your respective email ID. Thank you, ma'am. The next question is that when we are continuing a Meet on Google Meet, then uh, the participants are, for example, we take the students, they sometimes open their mic and all together they start of the class. So how can we mute all of them together? Is there any option like that? Yeah, very, very good question. Yes. Many often I have, we have, we all have experience. Being a teacher, we all have experience that students, uh, they, uh, you know, they forget to put on their, uh, put off their mic. So in that case, you know, yeah, this is a very simple option that if you are the organizer, like if you have created a link, then you have an option that you can mute them. You know, you can mute them, you can also remove them. You can see here, if you are joining through mobile, simply clicking on one, you will get three, I mean, if you are if you are the creator of the link, otherwise you will not be. Like right now, I am just a participant in this particular webinar or this meeting. So I cannot uh, mute anyone or I cannot remove anyone. But uh, this, uh, uh, the admin of this particular webinar, they can simply remove me, they can unmute me. So this is uh, all in your hand, if you are the, uh, link is created through your mail ID. Okay now. So uh, seeing the chat box, uh, it is clear that there are no more questions. And we had our discussion session until 8.20, but uh, I see there were no questions in the chat box. So if the participants feel like they have any question, you can write it in the chat box. But uh, as there are no questions, I think uh, we should uh, we want to do the announcement, next announcement. So I would hand over the mic to Dr. Yogatadash, Advent Tour and Pawan Abhishek, in our Facebook group. Associated Professor Barney, Lalabhav and College, Lalabhav Chayagam, West Bengal.
Dr. Rajini Gautam for introducing Ingrid our speaker today and Dr. J.K. Dey for giving the vote of thanks and there is always Dr. Devata Dash and the whole organizing committee who is responsible for having such a good webinar from my group. So I hope that we will all be having more interesting webinar. We will having more uh, webinars in future from my group and uh, also from other groups and I think today this will be all because I don't have any other questions that I have seen in the chat box and I don't think people are having any more queries. So now as everything is done, the vote of thanks is also given. I think I will be closing the portal now so everybody of you can leave the portal and thanks to everyone and also the participants for hearing the webinar and for staying with us for a long time. So, thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Akhmaja. Thank you, Dr. Sangeeta. One more, one more announcement. Uh, participants, uh, please download your certificate from uh, WhatsApp group or Telegram group today after 10 p.m. And those who are newcomers, please wait and uh, receive your certificate from uh, WhatsApp group or by mail. Thank you. If you feel any problem, just call me. My uh, uh, mobile number is here. You collect from chat box or you can mail to me. Okay. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. So everyone uh, who is there in the group who is waiting for the link or the numbers, you can collect that from the chat box. And but there is a few seconds. So at 8.20, I will be closing the group as there are no more questions and everything is done. So just collect your feedback link, etc. from the chat box and I will be closing the link by 8.20.